I'm gonna I gotta zoom in here to get this. So so there are these little tabs back in the board. It's I don't know if this HD is gonna come through, but the the the, the board actually goes into those tabs and then sits down on them. So uh, it looks like it's not gonna work, but once you get in there, then it'll go through. So yeah, okay, so now you'll give a good pressure and then it, it, you should hear it snap. Okay, and I'm snapped. Perfect. So so basically what we did for those again playing at home. There are these four little tabs that are bent up from the case, and those slide into four slots, two on each side for the back plane. And then you push those down, and your, your guide for clearance will be the fact that when you turn these little blue things over, it'll be on top of the board. If you can't turn these little blue tabs over, then your board's not far enough. So before you push down with too much pressure, make sure that these little tabs in here, and they're hard to see, are going through your board. And then when you're ready, these will just turn over like that. Cool, this is going well so far. So I'll turn those over and use my Torx bit. Again, it's a T15. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So now uh, you'll want to connect, you can connect the fans and then that uh, the other cable for the front lights. you'll notice there on the harness there for the fans uh, those are if you ever want to replace those fans you'll have to notice that you have to buy the right type of fan because uh, with the 470 model the fan uh, the speed of the fan is could, could be controlled so you need uh, a ground a positive I think one is for uh, rotation and then the other one is is a control to adjust the, the speed so these are uh, how many wires do you see there, there on each connector there's four it's different than the two and the three connectors that you're used to seeing so uh, John's right. That that's why the the speed is able to use. Uh, I believe we have a new add-in out, correct? To be able to yeah, control the the, the, uh, the uh, MSS uh, was a fan the controller there. It's at one point zero zero nine. So that if you have the three point zero update, uh, you'll be able to take advantage of uh, of using that add-in again. Yeah, this is a, a great setup. Again, I would. It's it's very straightforward. Like John said, these little rubber things. The whole fan just shifts this way. Um, again, assuming your your rubber pieces aren't too too cracked up, and then you can just undo the wire tie here and then change the fans out. Um, it would still be kind of a challenge to get in there and, and put them back in, but they do just drop out. And these are just basically um, 0.23 amp fans. I mean, they're just basic fans, correct? Well, that's it. They, they're uh, they're the fans with the, that the special function where you can adjust the speed. So if you're going to the store and you're buying a, a, a you know I think they're forty millimeter fans. If you're buying one like that, you have to make sure you have one with the with the four uh, the four pit control pins. Yeah, these are um, made in Taiwan by AVC company. So they're just standard cheap fans. So uh, I want to make sure I don't forget to plug in my remaining connector. That's going to change the the light patterns on the front, control those, and then I pop it back into its clip. So now I've got all the wiring back done. Everything's looking good so far, except my case is still a little naked. So uh, John will walk me through the remaining pieces of how to put everything back together and put the drives in. Yeah, so that's it. You can put the back uh, plate first, because that goes from the top down. So you want to put that before you put the, uh, the top part. Okay. And this does not look like it came off of this machine. There we go. Yeah, on this one too, it's going to take um, put in a lot of pressure on there to, to get the bottom down and to make sure all four holes line up and then it pops in. So yeah. just and check to make sure that each, each corner doesn't pop off or slide off, that you didn't miss one of the clips. You'll also notice on the side that you won't have any things like that. And also for those of you that are new to the home... Uh, Windows Home Server and the HP. These things aren't actually square. They actually taper in on the bottom. Yeah. So make sure you're aware of that when you're trying to line up your pieces. The other thing is I would check the uh, the power switch on the bottom. Make sure that it's comfortable. You're pressing in and out because sometimes it won't line up properly if you didn't do it right. Do you have a good touch there? Yeah. Okay, there you go. You can hear the switch because Again, sometimes if you didn't put that cover on properly, you won't hear the switch behind uh, making a good pressure contact. Okay. Just getting a little bit of the last minute dust out. 
Okay, so now we're going to do the, the sides. And then this is the same thing, correct? It just slides. Yeah, you'll line it up and then you'll uh, add pressure to the side of the case and then you'll pull it forward. Oh, they clip in much easier than they come out. So how many times have you had your case taken apart on your 470? Uh, too many to count. At least 10, 15 times. Yeah, I'm surprised any of your plastic is still holding together. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the final piece now is the top. That's right. So again, the, the way they, they have it set up, that's if you just put it down, line it up in the, in the, the pins with the, uh, the slots, and then lock it the, towards the back. You can see the slots here. Um, there are slots also on the top that you can see here, 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 and here. You'll also notice that quick way to be able to tell if someone has a server in their house is the, the 470 has the silver top. Whereas the 485s and above have the black glossy top. Little side bit of information no one cares about. Okay, so we line up everything. We set it. And we're complete. Slides in very easy. So now what we'll do is I will turn the lock. Correct? Does the lock uh, go now or does it go after the... Down. Oh, after the first drive, that's right. But uh, start from the uh, the top, yeah. Okay, so blown off these two. Okay. Okay, again holding from the back. Let's slide this back on. See now you. Uh so what you could do is you could actually start from the bottom so that the, the pins don't work, but let's see, that's a good case. So you uh, let's just slide it in and you should see it, uh, it line up and those little metal tabs will, will make contact with the plate above it. Right. Make sure that when you're sliding these in that you have the, the little handle up until the last click. Yeah, you, have, you want to make contact with the, with the back plate and when you hear that then you can lock it in, in place. Because if the handle is uh, is down, it won't go all the way to the rear. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have here one of the drives. I had my parents on the, the green drives uh, from Western Digital. This is a 750. So um, they run really well. They run really quiet. Uh, very little watt usage. Slides in and then clicks down. And then finally, the Seagate drive. Now, the original Seagate drive was one of the ones that was recalled, and I had had a problem with it. Uh, so HP gave us a 500 gigabyte drive. They shipped it overnight. We did the server recovery. That was on a couple, three months ago. We had done the article on that. Uh, but they were great with customer service. I talked to a guy named Sean there. He was really cool. Helped me get everything up and running quickly and easily, and I even did a full video on it. Shove that in, click it down, and now we have all four drives. The lock now clicks like that. That lock actually prevents you from pushing down this button. Uh, you'll notice that these are black on other ones that they're purple, but this move to the lock position prevents you from pulling out that lower drive. So I believe we're all done, correct? Do we have anything else we need to to check before we start it That's up? That's it. Looks good. So thank you, John. It's been great. Um, it took us probably about 45 minutes total uh, to do this from setup to end. Uh, we've actually only got about 35 minutes on tape, so uh, we did a pretty good job. Okay, well, thank you. Um, look forward to hearing you uh, next week on the show, and uh, hopefully I can find something else to, to break so you and I can talk about it and, and do another video. Thank you again. Sure. Anytime, Tim. Thanks for having me.